So you've just built an app and uh, it's time to officially publish it on the App Store. You need a professional and a nice looking app icon or otherwise nobody is gonna download it. You are a developer, but uh, not that good when it comes to design. Hiring a professional designer can cost you between uh, $200 and uh, $500, which is a huge investment for something that uh, might not even pay off right away. So what's the solution here? Well, I'm gonna show you how I do it for almost completely free. There are uh, three steps involved, however. The first one is uh, ChatGPT, where we provide uh, screenshots of our app, describe uh, all its features, target audience, and other relevant information so that uh, we can get a, a fully detailed response in a form of an image prompt for a image AI generation. The next step is to copy that uh, generated uh, image prompt and uh, feed it to the AI that uh, actually does generate an actual app icon image. And finally, we use uh, Figma to trace that uh, app uh, image into the actual vector that we can later easily scale and uh, export a pixel-perfect image for uh, various purposes. So, stay tuned! The first step is to open up the ChatGPT, which is completely free. Here we want to describe as uh, detailed as possible what our application is, how it works, and other relevant information. Like for example, my new app is called App Launch Kit, and here is a full detailed description. I'm gonna paste here that uh, full description, there it is, and then below all of that I'm gonna write here, I want you to create me an image uh, prompt for an AI that generates an app icon so that I can generate a beautiful and good looking app icon for my new project. Go! So it uh, indeed generated one app icon image prompt which uh, we can polish uh, even further more. But for now I'm just gonna copy it and uh, use that uh, AI image generation to just show you how this whole process actually works. So for the AI image generation, I have chosen one website which is called the imagegpt.io. You can choose practically any other AI image generation software at your choice. But this is the one which I have uh, already found and uh, tested it out. It's uh, not completely free, but uh, it's uh, pretty cheap, right? So I've bought around uh, 600 uh, coins for around uh, $10, and uh, with uh, each and every image generation here, we are spending only a single coin, right? So practically, we can create 600 uh, icons for uh, our applications using those uh, $10 credits, right? So this is the place where we can paste uh, our actual uh, prompt, right? I'm gonna paste it right there. And we can even choose uh, various different kind of icon styles like a solid, outline, color, flat, or sticker. Uh, for now, let's choose a solid. Uh, we can disable these two options down below and then click generate icon button. And uh, voila, so after a minute or two, uh, we are going to receive here uh, two results. So to be honest, this icon looks awesome. Right, so I personally like this uh, second one uh, even better. So we can see all these uh, details that are already included. So uh, this uh, rocket, because of our actual app name, uh, which is App Lounge, right? So that's why we see here a rocket. We also have the pen and uh, some of those uh, vector icons to represent that we actually do uh, create uh, app mockups with, with this app uh, project of mine. And we also have uh, different device frames, which perfectly reflects uh, what my app is actually doing. Now, the result of this uh, image prompt generator actually returns an image in a form of a PNG, right? So it's not a complete vector. That's why now we come to the third step. And the third step is to use Figma to trace this uh, app icon and convert it into the actual vector asset. So we can just click the download button to download this uh, image and then open up the Figma. And in Figma, I'm gonna press the shortcut uh, Command plus uh, Shift plus uh, K letter to find that uh, new image and uh, import it right here. There it is. So as you can see, if I zoom in, uh, then we should be able to see here uh, pixels of this image because this is actually a raster or raster image and it's not a pure vector. That's why the third step is the most crucial one because with the third step, uh, we need to basically vectorize or trace this uh, whole image and convert it into the vector asset. So obviously right now in this video, I'm not going to go through each and every step and uh, vectorize this uh, whole image because here we have uh, quite a few detailed uh, information or elements that we need to trace back into the vector. And by the way, I have already made this uh, app icon uh, for my project. So as you can see, this is the image that uh, I have generated initially uh, with my uh, prompt. And then I have vectorized only a part of this icon, like the actual rocket and those uh, clouds down below. And then by vectorizing only those parts or those elements, I have created an app icon that looks something like this. Okay. And then based on that uh, vector or that app icon, I have even designed my own uh, website which looks awesome, by the way. I have uh, published and deployed this website uh, officially as well. So here it is. It looks uh, really nice. 
So practically this is my uh, latest project that uh, I have been working on in the past uh, month and uh, it's not yet available on a Play Store or App Store but I am gonna publish this app uh, soon enough. Bottom line, this is the app icon which I have already made for it and I'm not gonna replace that uh, existing icon with the new one that I have generated. So I just wanted to show you an example of how you can create your own prompts and basically uh, do it by yourself. So now I'm just gonna show you what tools I have used to actually uh, vectorize this uh, whole uh, thing. So as you can see this uh, logo right here does not have uh, all the details that this uh, latest generation contains but still it's a beautiful icon as well so practically i'm using here in figma only those uh, basic tools like uh, shapes and a pen tool to trace these uh, elements and create a vector uh, assets out of it like for example here we can select the pen tool and then on top of that uh, image we can try and trace this shape like for example i'm going to zoom in here a little bit by holding down the command and then we can create here a perfect shape that uh, reflects precisely the shape behind on this image, right? So now I'm going to use the pen tool and uh, hold down the option key to move this uh, handle right here. So that we can now uh, move that uh, pen tool right there, for example. And then I'm going to create here, actually, just connect these two uh, anchor points right there. And then I'm going to create here this uh, second side or the, yeah, the right side of this rocket like that. I'm going to press now the V key and then I'm going to here add the fill color. There it is. So now we have created practically the first uh, shape uh, of this uh, rocket, right? And then, and then from here, uh, we can reduce the opacity to 50% so that we can see uh, behind and actually trace even more elements. You can, of course, uh, modify this uh, element at any time by uh, double clicking on it and then uh, moving this actual uh, anchor point uh, in the position wherever you want. You can even move these uh, handles as well to create an uh, even better shape uh, to make it look almost perfect as this image behind it. So this is the first shape, right? For the second shape, uh, we can also use the pen tool and then just uh, create here kind of the similar shape. So something like that. There it is. We can also now use the option key to move that channel right here and then hold down the shift, for example, to create this right line and then connect these two. Perfect, there it is. So it's quite easy. We can add the fill color. There you go. And now for this uh, other part, uh, we don't have to do it uh, all over again from the scratch. We already have that uh, same, pretty much the same shape. So we can now duplicate it by holding down the option key. We, uh, we can now press uh, shift plus uh, H and then we can rotate this uh, element to bring it, uh, you know, right uh, here. So press uh, five, number five to have a 50% opacity for this element so that we can precisely move it uh, in the position. So right there, for example, there it is. Or we can even improvise and create our own version uh, out of it. So you're free to experiment on your own. There it is. Uh, now we can uh, set the opacity here to uh, 100% and here as well. And there you go. So now we have traced uh, the part of our rocket and it looks amazing, right? Now, of course, there are uh, even more details that we need to add uh, on top of it. Like, for example, these uh, shadows and so on and other different uh, shadows to add a depth uh, to our actual image uh, as a 3D image, right? So this is a simple, you know, line that we're using. And then on that line, we are applying a layer uh, blur effect. And we are, you know, adding a blur effect uh, with a different color to, to just represent that kind of uh, depth uh, through our rocket. And then here uh, we, we have a circle shape with a linear gradient color. Then uh, we have one uh, simple line uh, that we have created uh, using the pen tool as well. So it has a different kind of a stroke style that we can uh, see right here. As you can see, so a solid uh, with profile is uh, this one. So also we can change that by ourselves. And that's how practically I have traced uh, all of these uh, things uh, right there. So behind this, uh, we also have one element that also uses the layer blur effect. And that's practically it. So that's how you vectorize your uh, raster images into the actual vector assets that look pixel perfect. Now, of course, this is the third and the most uh, harder part. It takes time, right? So you cannot do that uh, pretty quickly as we've done with uh, the prompt generation. But you can take a day or two to just uh, trace uh, everything and create uh, one uh, pixel perfect uh, vector out of those uh, images. Now, of course, the more details your app icon has, the more time it will take you to actually build that kind of uh, app icon. But that's how it works, right? And that's it. So uh, that's how I'm creating my own uh, app icons using the AI as well as my own skills to vectorize those uh, AI uh, image results into the actual vector assets. That's how you can save some money and uh, do it for almost completely free. Like I already said, the third step that includes uh, Figma and your own uh, design skills to trace that uh, image will require you uh, some time uh, to do it and to create the perfect result out of that. But to be honest, uh, even so, it's not that uh, hard because we already have the actual app icon that we uh, know how it looks like and we just need to trace over it. 
which is a better solution than uh, paying a designer up to $500 to create you an app icon. This way you can create uh, multiple different uh, icon versions by customizing this uh, prompt uh, even more and then you can decide on uh, what app icon you want to choose for your project. So be sure to like this video if you want to see some more helpful and interesting content like this one. Thank you for watching.